With the regular season winding down, the Warriors travel to Houston and pretty much seal them out of the playing tournament. I want to highlight the chemistry of Trace Jackson Davis and Klay Thompson on off-ball screens and on-ball pick and rolls to create open threes or layups, so let's break it down. Jackson Davis has taken the starting role recently and here he comes for the drag screen but slips it at the last second knowing the Rockets are so focused on Steph Curry and has Jabari Smith to come up high to trap. TJD's role now creates an advantage on the smaller Van Vliet, so Curry noses and lobs it to the paint, forcing the weak side low man Dylan Brooks to rotate. Now Jalen Green is responsible for the two weak side dubs, but bad mistake here by him to drop super low even though Brooks is in good help position. This opens up a classic weak side corner where Klay Thompson is just chilling, and that's a veteran move to know the shooter is there and immediately pass the rock, letting Klay splash from behind the arc. Jackson Davis has become the first major Warriors big man rolling threat in years. With the shot clock winding down, TGD finally comes for the empty side pick and roll with Chris Paul. I think since the big man Lawndale was on CP3 here, Amon Thompson wanted to immediately switch the screen to prevent the mismatch. But Jackson Davis rolls at the perfect time to not allow Houston to communicate this, and credit Paul for shot faking and sliding this amazing pounce pass only he can make to the roll man for an uncontested dunk. On an out-of-bounds play, I want you guys to notice the subtle details here. Screen setting and rolling is an art, even though it's not going to show up on the stat sheet. With CP3 getting the first high pick by TJD, the real action is the second weak side pin down, where Holiday is stuck to Clay. As he sets the pick, Jackson Davis is able to sense Clay and his defender's position, but also know that Jock Lawndale may come up high to contest Thompson. So he rolls at the right moment after creating just enough space between Clay and Holiday, but also taking Lawndale with him so he isn't able to come up high. In Clay's mind, this open area from the corner of his eyes is all he sees as he launches the catch and shoot. Trace Jackson Davis has clearly become a starting level center in this league. His ability to reset screens and see that Houston once again is trapping Steph. So he rolls at the right time to create another advantage as Van Vliet switches late. When Curry gets him the ball, now we have another 4 and 3 advantage, similar to the first play I showed. Brooks still comes over the rotate as the weak side low man, but this time Jackson Davis takes it himself and goes up high to finish with the strong left hand and the foul. It's become really noticeable for Warriors fans to see Clay and TJD's chemistry, especially in the pick and roll creating different options. On an out of bounds, we don't have anything fancy but the inbounder in Thompson going directly to Jackson Davis. As Jalen Green is a step behind already, this handoff by the rookie acts as a screen and Green makes a bad decision to go under. Clay sees this and counters by easily rising up for a catch and shoot at the top of the arc. Again, screen setting is such an underrated skill set. Ime Udoko is telling the Rockets to literally switch everything, and even this first action isn't technically a pick by TJD, and they still switch. As a rookie comes for the strong side pin down on Klay Thompson, a common counter to off-ball switching by defenses on screens is for the shooter to stop in his tracks and create that half-second gap where defenders are communicating to switch. Here you can see Thompson does not come up on the wing to curl, but instead stops and sets his feet. Steph knows this was coming and passes it at the perfect time, right in between when Jalen Green and Van Fleet were communicating the switch off ball. That's all the daylight the hottest shooter on the court needs. Now let's see what happens when the Rockets switch too hard. On the right wing, you can see Thompson tell the rookie to come give him a pin down. Since he had just launched a three, Houston was well aware of this and as Jabari Smith Jr. stick his hand out to come up high super early. The counter to this is both guys go to Clay, allowing Jackson Davis to roll early as well with no resistance. The second Clay receives the ball, it is another late switch by the guard onto the big man. Deep pass into the paint, and TJD stays patient by dribbling once to make sure Green jumps over him first before laying this in. On a strong side pin down, we have the same action all night with the rookie and Clay, and the Rockets finally decide to learn their lesson by switching off ball. With CP3 as the floor general, now we have Jabari Smith Jr. in the deny position, with his eyes locked on Thompson. The counter to this by the Warriors is for Clay to fade, and the second Smith Jr. turns away to look at where the ball is, you can always trust Chris Paul to get the ball to the right person at the right time. Dylan Brooks immediately notices the three point threat and goes out to switch, but this wasn't communicated back to Smith Jr., leaving TJD wide open. Open. Perfect balance pass on the baseline for Jackson Davis to dunk on two guys. 
With Clay stuck on automatic last night, he was amazing at being unselfish and finding the rolling man. We get another pin down and the Rockets play with fire by not switching and having Thompson shoot the gap and cheat the screen. Now Golden State runs a simple empty side pick and roll, but the Rockets stop switching these and instead has the big man drop back, allowing the point of attack defender to try and recover over the pick. However, this creates an advantage for Clay to attack with a strong right hand while getting a first step already, and at the last second for some reason Longdale wanted to finally commit to help, even though we know that Clay is not the best driver. This again leaves Jackson Davis wide open as the roll man, and it's another great hook pass to the rookie to finish the and one layup. Great chemistry here. This may have been my favorite. It's next level IQ for Golden State to have the first play work, but then immediately predict how the defense will try to adjust, and then counter them back with a secondary action. Here you can see TJD call out Clay for another pin down, and since it has been working the whole night, you know the Rockets are alert. As he comes to set it, he notices Londell is not paying attention to him at all, and we've seen this often with both GP2 and Kaminga, where at the last second they legit slipped that screen to cut to the basket. Knowing out of everyone in the world, Chris Paul will be able to not only be on the same page, but make this law pass in his sleep. What a play. There you guys have it. I feel like it's finally time to make a video on the emerging duo of Klay Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis. TJD has erupted the last few months as a high IQ big man who can set solid screens, put pressure on the rim, and make timely cuts and rolls to the basket to create advantages. With Klay Thompson on fire last night, he was able to capitalize on this and create open shots from downtown or high percentage looks for the rookie as the screener. They have started to click this newfound chemistry the last few months, but now it is clear the Warriors can use it as a weapon. Great win to essentially eliminate the Rockets for a play-in, and now to a tough back-to-back -to -back against Dallas. If you guys like this breakdown, like and subscribe to see more.